Good morning, St. James. It's great to be with you, and I hope this finds you doing well and that uh, you had a rich Thanksgiving. I know many of our Thanksgiving plans were altered this year, but I hope you had uh, moments of grace and time for uh, reflecting of all that you have to be thankful for, all the blessings in your life. And as I reflect upon that, uh, you all are uh, an incredible blessing to me uh, in so many ways, in the ways that you reflect uh, Christ's love for the world, in the ways that you care for, for, for me and my family. Uh, I uh, must thank you for all of those uh, birthday uh, wishes and for all those that prayed or uh, checked in to see how my eye surgery went. And um, it went very well and I'm very grateful for all of you uh, and for all the ways that you all uh, continue to, uh, to be the body of Christ in such meaningful ways. So, um, so I certainly took the time to, uh, to, to give thanks. I'm also thankful for all the ways that you all were able to uh, run or walk or wobble in this year's Gobble Gobble Run and Wobble. Uh, and uh, we had videos or pictures posted as far flung as South Carolina. Uh, and it was great to see uh, people, um, uh, people all over the community running and uh, walking and, and again, wobbling uh, to the finish line. So, uh, so thank you for doing that. And if you haven't sent or posted your pictures, we'd love to see them. Uh, also, uh, thank you for your support of the angel tree again this year. I know it's been a little more difficult. Uh, you couldn't just uh, walk by the uh, um, uh, the tree and pull off an, uh, a name this year, uh, but thank you all for going online and for signing up. There are still a few children uh, who need a sponsor or a um, uh, a Santa Claus this year. So, uh, so please uh, take the time to, to sign up and, uh, and offer to support a child. And if you do that and it is all filled, uh, please let uh, Jen Taylor know because uh, one, uh, there are other children um, that, we can, uh, that we can fill their needs. Uh, and there's always people that are, are reaching out this time of year for support. So, uh, so if you get there and it's all filled up, please still consider uh, telling uh, Jen Taylor uh, that you'd like to help and we'll find ways to uh, to enable you to do that so uh, so thank you uh, also this is uh, the time of year where we make our uh, bold commitment for the year to come our uh, our pledge to the 2021 ministry of saint james and and while there are a lot of unknowns uh, the one thing that i am sure of is that saint james will continue to be uh, light and um uh, and care and love uh, to this community and beyond. Uh, so please get your commitment in so that we can begin to, to, um, to envision that year and, um, and uh, respond boldly. So, uh, and we thank you in advance for all those um, who make their commitment each year to support the ministry of St. James. Uh, nothing uh, that happens here would be possible without that. And with that, we begin this brand new year. The Gospel of John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas, and we reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used that language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks of a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope. And we dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and for the well-being of all creation. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'd like to say thank you to Father Ben, retired Bishop Ted, Bob Irving, and all the church members for their exceptional efforts to keep our church and parish united. We miss everyone, and with each day, we get closer to being together again in our church home. We look forward to that day. 
Take care, stay well, and know that you are in our thoughts and prayers. We are sending you all our love and big virtual hugs. We begin. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life of mortal. To him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Prayers of the People I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in law enforcement, for their safety, their morale, and that they may know the support and gratitude of the communities they serve. We pray for those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. I ask your prayers for all those who have suffered or feared discrimination mistreatment, or violence because of their God-given identity. Help us to understand, to acknowledge our corporate responsibility, and guide us toward sustained healing, reconciliation, and unity. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, and those in prison, especially during this season. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially for Cassia, Tom, Pat, Patty, Nayla, Howard, Mira Lee, Karen, Helen, Carol, Bonnie, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, Kay, Ed, Marie, and for those who we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all health care and emergency workers those who continue to put themselves in an increased risk to provide essential services, and those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stephen ministers, and their care partners. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died and any whom we now may name, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. I 
we give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify God in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, may we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together, embolden us as your church to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven, and the power in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learned its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. For what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we've made it. We've made it to a new church year. I know many were uh, eagerly anticipating that turn from 2020 to 2021. But this is a new year in the life of the church, and it begins with a season that we so desperately need. A season of hope. It begins with that rich full season of Advent, season of anticipation, of waiting for God. If a child were to walk through the doors and say, what's Advent? Father Ben, why are you not getting ready for Christmas? Uh, where are the Christmas songs? Where are the decorations? What's going on here? I thought about how I try to explain Advent, and it wouldn't be easy. I would say that we wait for Christmas with a special season, a season called Advent. And the word Advent means to come. In each week, we light another candle as we prepare ourselves. Uh, and it's a lot like that feeling that we have on Christmas Eve when we're so excited we can hardly stand it. But we build up that excitement so that when Christmas comes, we realize how amazing it is. And that blue and the pink on the advent wreath candle are those colors that we see in the sky right before the sun comes over the horizon. And these colors remind us that we're waiting for something so breathtaking, something uh, that will light the, the skies and will change the world forever. And that the blue also reminds us of Mary and so that we don't race past uh, all that, that courage and all that Mary uh, went through in preparing to have that child and all that might have been on her heart and mind as she knew that baby, that baby that would change the world forever was growing inside of her. So we take time to, to reflect on all of this before we celebrate Christmas too early. And the child may nod and say, I understand I imagine the next question comes, so what are we waiting for again? To which I would say, 
we're not just waiting for Christmas, we're waiting for that child to be born. And we walk through this in anticipation of that child being born uh, so that that light would shine more, more boldly in our lives so that we could celebrate even more that Christ is born. And they might say, well, didn't that happen a long time ago, Father Ben? To which I might say, yes. But each time we prepare ourselves, we meet Jesus a little differently. That maybe if we take a little bit more time cleaning out our closets, our metaphorical closets, thinking about what's really important, preparing ourselves for something new to happen, maybe we get there a little bit more like those shepherds that dropped everything and, uh, and rushed to Bethlehem, or like those wise men that came with such uh, lavish gifts. Maybe if we change ourselves, we meet Christmas and that Christ child a little differently. That, that might resonate. The child might be okay with that as long as Christmas Day still uh, comes as it always does and Christmas morning um, uh, is met with all the presents. That might work, but they might press a little bit more. They might ask me, Father Ben, is that it? Is that what we're waiting for, something that happened that long ago? And I would say, no, we're also so trying to open our eyes wider, clear out all the clutter so that we can see a God who loves us more than anything, working in our lives already. That Christ comes into our lives so many different ways through people and through the events that happen and through ways that are, we're blind to because we don't have our eyes wide open, because we haven't pulled those curtains uh, wide open to see that light coming in, uh, pulled those stage curtains wide to see that act taking place. And so part of Advent is opening ourselves uh, and clearing out the clutter so that we can see all the ways that God is already in our lives, uh, the God that loved us enough to send his son into the world uh, to become just like us, flesh and bone just like us is always reaching out to us, always trying to get our attention to, uh, to shower us with love. And Advent's a season where we open ourselves to, to being more ready for that. By that point, I think I've probably lost the child. But if the child presses on, is there more, Father Ben? I would go to this Sunday. And that every Advent, especially Episcopalians are challenged with a theological belief that we don't necessarily spend enough time with or have a definitive understanding in our own lives. That part of the creed that says Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Advent is a season where we hold to that theological truth that God's not done. That as bold as that light breaking into the darkness, as bold as Jesus coming into the arms of that, of that wonderful expectant mother, God's actions are not done. And in the end, when we flip to the last page, and I know a lot of people who, when they like to read books, uh, like to go to the last page. And if the last page gets them, then they'll go back to the beginning. And even though Advent is that first season of the church year, even though we are getting ready for that first incredible act in, in, in the incarnation of Christ coming in as an infant child, we're also looking forward to the end, to the last chapter of the book. And we're claiming that same truth. The God who is light, who made all of us, who came as a light into the darkness, will work definitively in the end for God's glory and out of God's love for us in a triumphant way. And we live within that ark. We're embraced by those truths. A God who came as light into darkness and a God who will always shine. And in the end, that light will overcome all darkness. We wrap ourselves in that God who has wrapped that, those arms around us. And so, especially when we need it most, especially 
when life seems most unsettled, when it seems chaotic like it did to the uh, listener in Mark's time, that truth becomes even more important. This is not a nostalgic season of looking back, although there is that piece of it. And it's not just a season of taking off our blinders to see God uh, at work all around us. It is as squarely a season of hope as any in the church year. It's a season where we bind ourselves to the truth that that light, that light that can scatter any darkness, will break into our lives. It always has, and it ultimately will, and it does. And so we prepare ourselves for that light. We prepare ourselves by making our lives a manger, by trying to build that kingdom that Jesus so beautifully articulated to us, and by doing it with urgency. So often, we think, we'll get around to it. We'll take care of it another day. But like new parents anticipating a child and needing to get all those details ready before that child is born, this is a season for urgency. That when... Christ comes. When Christ comes as that infant child, when Christ comes in all the ways that Christ comes into our lives, and when Christ comes again, that we will be ready. Ready doing justice. Ready caring for the world. Ready being the light and the love that we will receive. And so we enter this new season filled with hope hope that a light that will scatter all darkness has come, is coming, and will come into our world. Amen.
Christ, the son of righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God Almighty. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our worship is now ended and our service in the world begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.